This video is about digitizing Super 8 with the iPhone. Otherwise, film transfer also works very well with consumer cameras, and there are many videos on this channel, but today I'm showing it with the iPhone. The lenses can be used not only for digitization, but also for macro photography and macro video. At the end of the video, you can see a few shots. Well, I have the iPhone set from Film Digital here, which consists of an optic and a threaded case for the respective iPhone model. Of course, a different case is supplied depending on the iPhone model. Attaching the case and lens is very easy. It is important to check in advance which lens is the telephoto zoom lens on the iPhone, as this is the only lens that will work. On the iPhone 16 Pro, with which I'm demonstrating this today, the telephoto lens is the second from the top. On many other models, the telephoto lens is in the top left-hand corner, as here on the iPhone 14 Pro Max. In addition to the iPhone set, you need an adjustable LED, which is available in different versions from Film Digital. It fits into the original holder of the old halogen lamps that used to be installed in the projectors. The original lens is removed, as is the spring behind it in the shaft. Here I remove the focus knob from the Bauer projector. Now you can see the M3 thread, where the supplied Allen key grub screw is inserted to fix the lens. Now I push the lens all the way in and support the mobile phone with a small lifting table, which allows me to easily adjust the height. I start the Pro Camera app and select Video and the iPhone's telephoto zoom lens, two times, three times, or five times, depending on the model. Now I adjust the sharpness of the image with the zoom ring of the lens. In Pro Camera, I first set a low ISO level and the brightness of the LED slider to center at most. The slider should also be moved slowly from time to time during the transfer. But first, we need to set a few things in Pro Camera. We go to the App menu. The first icon, the Manual selection, is of course essential for our application. Resolution and frame rate can also be selected on the first menu page. On the second menu page, we set the mirror function to Vertical. Only now does the F symbol for Flip appear at the front of the screen and can be activated or deactivated. Click on the Settings wheel to access the most important default setting. I go to Advanced Settings, Special Exposure Time and deactivate the default Adapt to Output Frame Rate. Now I can select individual shutter speeds, preferably 154 or even better 127 second for digitizing 8mm film. This is the only way to avoid flickering with a projector that has a 3-blade shutter and runs at 18 frames per second. Also important under Settings are the settings for quality and file format. The shutter speed can now also be changed at the preview, just press M here. If I tap on WB, I can change the white balance. It may be slightly yellowish because the projection lamps used to be very yellow and so the projected films had much warmer colors than the actual film material. If you change the light of this wall lamp, you can see how different the effect can be. The exposure and white balance are now set manually which is why the letters M and WB are underlined. It is also advisable to set the focus manually. Now everything is set up and the film transfer can begin. And what about the sound?
As the recognition of some Bluetooth audio devices does not always seem to work so easily, we have experimented with audio interfaces and mixers that are connected either via Lightning or USB-C, depending on the iPhone version. All iPhones between 11 and 14 have a Lightning interface. From iPhone 15 and 16 the newer USB-C port is used. Various mixing consoles and audio interfaces were recognized via this in our tests. For example, the Alto TrueMix 600 mixing console, the iRig Pro Duo interface and the very similar but much cheaper TC Helicon Go Twin. First of all, the magnetic sound from the projector must be fed into the microphone input of the mixer or interface via the 5-pin DIN output. With the interfaces, the signal can be leveled and then forwarded to the iPhone via the Lightning or USB-C port. It is then recognized by Pro Camera, which can also be seen in the sound level display on the preview page. With mixing consoles such as the Alto TrueMix, you can also listen in via the headphone output and enhance the signal in various ways using the controls. However, there is no direct connection to the iPhone here. So you have to use adapters that connect the output RCA, jack or USB-B to the iPhone's Lightning or USB-C. Uh, what else can I do with the optics and the LED lighting? Maybe a macro of a few small flowers. Lighting is always extremely important for macro shots. And the optics can also be used for very small objects, plants or animals. In this way, a small, inconspicuous flower can become a great beauty. With a lens, you can get into the smallest corners, like here in this exhibition box. A little hint. When taking macro photos, the anti-shake function prevents the iPhone from vibrating These are a few more shots taken with the iPhone set from Film Digital. You can find more information in the description below. And don't forget, subscribe to the Film Digital channel.